Do women face a trade-off between professional success and their ability to attract a romantic partner? Existing research has shown that many traits, such as ambition and assertiveness, that are typically rewarded in a professional context are not seen by men as desirable traits in a partner. This suggests that in contexts ranging from whether or not to pursue a particular job or seek a promotion, all the way down to speaking up in meetings or working late, single women may face a choice between labor market and marriage market success. In this paper, the authors ask whether there is evidence that women face such a trade-off and whether it distorts their professional choices. To do so, they focus on students at an elite MBA program in the US. This is a natural setting in which to examine this trade-off, as graduate school is a time when many students are both investing in their careers and looking for a long-term partner. To start, the authors provide two pieces of observational evidence. First, incoming students completed a survey that asked whether, in the two years before business school, they had avoided certain actions that could have helped them professionally out of fear that they would have appeared too ambitious, assertive, or pushy. The results are shown separately for single and non-single women, as well as single and non-single men. Relative to the three other groups, the authors find that single women were more likely to have avoided these behaviors by amounts that are both economically and statistically significant. The second piece of observational evidence comes from student grades, which reveal that while there is no difference between married and unmarried women's performance on assignments and exams where grades are private, unmarried women score lower on class participation, which is publicly observable and may signal a student's assertiveness. In contrast, married and unmarried men perform similarly on both. While only suggestive, these observations are at least consistent with the idea that single women avoid actions that might appear undesirable to potential partners. To examine this more concretely, the authors use two randomized experiments. In the first, while attending a mandatory career advising session, students were asked to complete a questionnaire about their job preferences. By design, this included a number of questions where answers that would make the respondents more appealing job candidates would also make women less attractive spouses. For example, students were asked how many days they were willing to travel per month. While a willingness to travel is a positive signal for potential employers, it is likely a negative signal in the marriage market. Crucially, the authors prepared and randomly distributed two versions of the questionnaire, a private one and a public one that were identical aside from one word in the instructions. The private version stated that anonymized answers will be discussed in class, while the public one stated that your answers will be discussed. While students who received the private version could reasonably expect that their responses would only be seen by a career counselor, those with the public version faced the possibility that their answers would be shared with classmates. The results show that for the most part, non-single women provided similar answers regardless of whether they received the private or public survey. The picture looks very different, however, for single women, who report lower desired compensation, less willingness to travel, and fewer desired weekly hours of work when they expect their answers to be public. Single women also self-report having lower tendency to lead and less professional ambition in the public treatment. To rule out the possibility that single women are simply humbler across all dimensions, the questionnaires also asked students to rate their writing skills. In this case, where there is no clear trade-off between labor market and marriage market signaling, both single and non-single women provide similar answers in both the private and public treatments. These results suggest that when they expect their answers to be public, single women change their responses in ways that make them look less appealing to the labor market in order to avoid signaling negative traits to potential partners. 
In contrast, the authors find that non-single women and men behave similarly regardless of whether they expect their answers to be public or private. A final experiment shows that single women are especially likely to represent themselves as less career-focused when their audience is male rather than female. The researchers split the students into small groups, with half of the single women randomly placed into all female groups, and the remainder placed with all male groupmates. Students were then given a questionnaire with three pairs of hypothetical jobs, asked to choose their preferred job in each pair, and instructed that their answers would be discussed with the rest of the group. Two job pairs presented a trade-off between professional success and desirability in the marriage market, while the third presented no such trade-off. The results show that when presented with a trade-off, single women were less likely to choose the option with higher professional value when they expected their answers to be shared with male rather than female peers. In contrast, when no such trade-off was apparent, single women's responses were unaffected by their group's gender composition. This is consistent with single women presenting themselves less favorably to the labor market and more favorably to the marriage market when they believe their choices will be seen by men as opposed to women. In conclusion, this research provides evidence that single women avoid actions that could improve their careers in order to avoid signaling undesirable traits to potential partners. While the authors are cautious about extrapolating beyond the particular context studied here, they note that female MBA students are likely to be more career-focused than the general female population, which suggests that the effects of marriage market signaling may be even larger in other contexts. Given that women make many important schooling and career decisions while simultaneously looking for a partner, even a temporary exposure to this trade-off may have long-term consequences for women's careers. To explore more in this area, you can check out the full paper, along with its references to other related research. These include many papers on the gender wage gap, research showing that women's professional ambition and success are penalized in the marriage market, and finally, a broader literature on how economic decisions are affected by social image concerns.